Oregon State at Oregon, 8.30 Eastern on Fox, Autzen Stadium, very crucial here now. This is a Friday game. So don't don't wait till Saturday and say, okay, well that, you know, Oregon, Oregon State's not till the next day. No, 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 it's a Friday game. So get the leftovers out, a little bit of apple pie, whatever you gotta do to get ready for this game, make sure we're dialed in on a Friday. Also worth worth noting, uh, I said savor that old that whole uh, SEC on CBS jingle that we were getting. Similar thought here. This is the last one for a minute. This is the last one for the foreseeable future with Oregon State and Oregon. Classic rivalry. This is the one part that you kind of hate about conference realignment. And for Oregon, like they're headed to the, to the Big Ten next year, but I mean, they, they want to win the Pac-12 this year. Pac-12 title hopes are intact. College football playoff hopes are intact. But you got to get past your rival who's playing some really good football right now, played, played Washington to a two-point loss last week if you want to get there. And if you're Oregon, this is what you signed up for. This is what you signed up for. If I told you, hey, we're going into the last game of the regular season, you're playing Oregon State, you got one loss, Pac-12 title, still on the table, college football playoff, still on the table. You take it in a heartbeat. You would take it in a heartbeat. I think this is a chance now for them to, I think, cement their case for the college football playoff outside of that Pac-12 title game. Like how they look against the common opponents with Oregon State just playing them, la- or excuse me, with Oregon State just playing Washington last week, just keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on how that looks for the committee going forward here. Now, for Oregon State, this is just the ultimate spoiler kind of spot for them. Ultimate spoiler. Like, the last time they're going to play, potentially, it's it's in Eugene, so it's at their place. Your conference future, if you're Oregon State, it's uncertain. You know, by the way, Oregon, they, uh, they kind of helped propel all this madness here as they're leaving to the Big Ten next year. Like, if you can knock them out of the college football playoff, hand them their second loss if you're Oregon State. Like, how how sweet would that be? This is potentially the greatest spoiler spot for the Beavs that you could ask for. You got a chance to get it done. So, some non-negotiables. Spread is 13 and a half favor in Oregon. For Oregon State, I need some explosives. Whatever that looks like. Whether it's play action, whether it's DJ Uwe Ungalale making plays with his legs like he did last week against Washington really effectively, need some explosiveness. I don't think this is a game where you can totally just go three yards in a cloud of dust all the way down the field. Not just because Oregon's good on the defensive line. We'll talk about that. But I think by nature of how Oregon's going to require you to score points, need some explosives. Silas Bolden, I think this is a game for him again. We talked about it last week against Washington. I think you need seven to step up for you again this week. Uh, Silas Bolden, of course, kind of the Swiss Army knife. They do a lot with him. Getting him out in the perimeter, throwing the ball to him in the slot. Like He is a weapon for them, and he has to step up big. How long does it take for Bo Nix to get into rhythm? And the matchup to watch is going to dictate this. Oregon State on the perimeter of their defense? I like to mix it up now. Like Roma Dunze, one of the best in the country. Some people would say should win the Blitnikoff Award for the best receiver in the country. Uh, They were pretty physical on the outside with them. And I think that was exactly what they needed to do. But that's crucial now in this game because that's how Oregon likes to get rolling is by attacking the perimeter. Whether it's the jet sweeps on the outside whether it's the outside zone, whether it's the quick game out there to Troy Franklin, like they're going to try and get your defense stretched out so they can start going north and south. So what I want to say is if they don't get rolling on the perimeter and they look back to the interior, well, then you play into the strength of your defense if you're Oregon State because they are top 20 in the country in terms of yards allowed rushing per a game, just a little bit over 100. That would keep this game in a wrestling match kind of spot. Because if they get on the perimeter and they start scoring and it's, you know, a a game you got to play in the 30s or in the 40s, that favors Oregon. That's an MMA fight where you're just trading punches, trading kicks. If it's a wrestling match, it's field position. It's a punt off. It's, okay, can you go 80 yards instead of having to go back and forth and match score? So that would be crucial for Oregon State and obviously have a very big impact on the game. Now, right along with that, what are the situations that you put DJ Uwe Ungalale in? What do you ask of that offense? Because Oregon State, they're a downhill rushing attack. That's who they want to be. I talk about them like they're you know the Stanford of old or the, or the Utah of the last couple of seasons. They want to control the line of scrimmage, and they want to play that way. Now, Oregon, their defensive line is one of the best in the country. They're allowing less than 100 yards rushing. I believe they're number eight in the country, allowing right around 91 yards on the ground a game. They're very good. So what it comes down to in my mind is how many third and sevens do you put Oregon State in? Because the more the more third and seven plus you have to play, the greater advantage for Oregon. And we saw that last week against Washington. 
I would also say right in line with that, the success on the ground for Oregon State, they do a lot on play action. So they have a better chance clearly of hitting those explosive plays and getting the ball to Silas Bolden in the flat and being able to hit the tight end down the seam off of play action. And if they have to play straight up and go third and seven and just say, okay, we got to we gotta go our guys versus your guys. I don't think the skill players for Oregon State favor that matchup. Now, DJU, I think he he's, should put a lot of respect on his name based on what he's done to this point in the year. I think he's a much better quarterback than people wanted to give him credit for based on his Clemson days. He's been spinning it this year. But I don't know that his guys can separate consistently enough in third and seven to beat Oregon in that spot. Now, if they can pound the rock and you live in third and two, advantage Oregon State. Take the air out of the game. Make Bo Nix watch. Kind of the same approach you had last week against Washington is the same approach this week against Oregon. You try and limit the possessions that Oregon's going to get. A lot of that comes with how you run the football against Oregon because the tempo of this game is huge. And the way that I think about this, if both these teams are cars, I think Oregon State is something like a Hummer. Physical, going to try and just kind of off-road with you, control the game, durable, slow and steady. That's kind of who they are. They don't have a ton of like extra gear to them, but they, I mean, they, as a Hummer, they can just roll on you, roll on you, roll on you and go off road. And that could be how they roll. It could be how they win the game. For Oregon, I think they're probably a little bit more like a, like a Range Rover of sorts. Like not necessarily like a Ferrari where they're just going to go a million miles an hour, but they can also kind of go off road a little bit. They can also go on the highway. Like they, they got a little bit of extra gear to them. So when I look at this game, I think there's more races that Oregon can win with that Range Rover than Oregon State can with their Hummer. Now, if it becomes an, an off-road mountain race of we're going to run the football, like I said, field position, if it becomes that kind of game, I'll take the Hummer. But I think Oregon's going to be able to force it into a game where you have to match them offensively. You got to kind of have a little bit extra gear, a little bit more speed. And I think that game favors Oregon. So with the multiple ways that I think Oregon can win, I think Oregon wins this game. I think it's close. I think it's 33-24 Ducks. And they're headed to that Pac-12 title game more than likely, headed to the college football playoff if they can beat Washington. But like this is a massive, massive game for all that Oregon wants to accomplish if they can beat their rival. So expect a ton of emotion. Expect a ton of juice from both sides. Uh, expect a little bit of chippiness here from both sides just because it's rivalry weekend. And this is the last time we're going to see these teams for the foreseeable future. It'll be a good one. Dial in, but again, we got the Ducks getting it done. I would not touch the spread. It's a Friday. Make sure you're locked and loaded. As we moved out of summer season with the shorts, that's great. Bird Dogs took care of us all summer long. You say, okay, well, we're going into the winter now, J.D., in the fall, like kind of cozy, crispy season, so we probably got to hang the Bird Dogs up, right? Uh, no, 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 not necessarily. Bird Dogs, they have a tremendous fitting pant for you that's going to, one, just look good, and that's crucial. Like, you got to look good, feel good, work good, play good. That's, that's important. It's first off. Second off, extremely comfortable. I said feel good right after look good because that's extremely important. When you're doing the eight to five every single day, you want something you can wear to the office and not feel like you're, you're walking in some cardboard pants. It's not bird dogs. Great stretching material. You could wear it to the office and you could go work out in it afterwards if you're really on a time crunch. I wouldn't recommend it because you would look like a crazy person working out in khakis, but you could do it if you want to. So redeem code JD at checkout for, at birddogs.com. Get you a nice little uh, Yeti style cooler. Great here as we finish up with uh, the college football regular season, bowl season now. A lot of crispy tailgates, gonna want a hot beverage to put in that thing. So make sure you use uh, code JD at checkout and they will take care of you. So we appreciate Bird Dogs bringing all the hard count. Again, code JD. Get some Bird Dogs. You won't wanna take them off, I promise. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.